Hello, in this video I will show you something quite interesting, I believe, and something that can be sort of useful, and that is how to use arguments, console arguments in C Sharp, okay? If you've ever used one of these uh, primitive, as I like to call them, uh, console applications, they are out well, then you do programming, you need them quite often, and basically what happens is you download the Excel file, and then you type that in with the directory of it, uh, and then you put down some arguments. You do a space after the Excel file, you write something, and it runs with those arguments, okay? So I'll show you how to make that happen, and I'll show you how to do it in a more of a debug mode, okay? Not, uh, uh, we, we won't need to open a console window, nothing like that, so it's quite simple. Okay, first of all, we have um, a little application. It's a simple C sharp, uh, C sharp console application. Nothing fancy here. We have main, okay, main, and the arguments are strings, and these are the arguments. String array for the arguments. Uh, now it's probably not commonly used, but these do exist. Okay, so this parameter will be the arguments for the uh, console when the console launches and it is a string array. It's not limited to any specific number. You can enter several, you can enter one, you can do many different things. Okay. Now the way it works and where to find it, I will show you now. First, you need to go to properties, the properties window, and you need to go to debug. Okay. Debug. And you will be able to enter everything in the application arguments okay application arguments you enter them as if you would in the console window it's just a lot quicker this way and you don't have to type it in every time you can test it right away but basically each each argument is separated by a little space like that okay so you write the word and you write a little space and then another word and that's another argument so these are two different arguments, okay? And these are two different arguments as well, separated by a space. But if you have a space inside a word, what you need to do is you need to put it in these quotation marks. Very simple. So that will not separate them into two different arguments. This will be one single argument. Test, space, one. And that's it. Okay, so... We also use these uh, so-called flags, okay? So you specify which argument it is, okay? It might be, say, source, or it might be, say, mode, or it might be uh, password or something like that. Uh, we have P1, okay? And then we have the actual value. And the program I want to show you is it basically separates them and finds uh, the actual argument. And you can uh, insert both of them or none of them. Uh, or, and, and you can do it in any order you choose to do it. Okay. So we have uh, P1. Okay. We have if statement. So if the arguments contain P1, that means we can search for the value for P1. It's kind of like a dictionary, key and value pair. So we find P1 and then we just print param1, parameter1. I call them parameters. It could be argument, doesn't matter. Uh, that's not really the point here. But we have P1. If we find that, we know that there should be an actual value. Obviously, if the user does not insert that, we don't really have too much of a way to check for it. And uh, that's why I don't really like these applications, but it is what it is, right? So then we have to find the index of the actual value. And for that, we find the index of the flag, okay, P1, P1, and then plus one, okay, we move, uh, one space, uh, one index value for the actual value, and we find a value. Quite simple. And the same goes for P2. Just a different flag, a, a different name. We have a P2 right here, plus one. So now if I would run it, remember the arguments are P1 test one, and then P2 simply test two with no space. 
I will run it and you will see the result right here, the result, param1, test1, and then param2, test2. I can run it again. I can remove this, for example, and just run with B1 like that. And you see, I only get param1, test1. Now, if you do want to learn a bit more about C Sharp, you can watch my course on C Sharp. You can also watch my C Sharp Advanced course where I explain some sort of the more advanced stuff about C Sharp, how to handle all these different things in a proper way, how to not lose too much memory and things like that. The, the links are provided in the description. Do check them out. And with that, we will conclude this video.